from the reading that Pastor Josh just read. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the beginning of this time that we call Lent, this time when we remember your suffering, your death, your sacrifice for us, that we could live with you forever. Thank you for this opportunity to come and and confess our sins and, and repent and hear that word of forgiveness we so much need. Thank you for your word of forgiveness from the cross. Send your Holy Spirit to bring this word close to us. Amen. A few words about Ash Wednesday uh, before I begin. The early church, from very early on, we don't know how early, celebrated Ash Wednesday, but they did it during what we would call Holy Week. The Wednesday, they would gather, mark with ashes. Actually, at that time, they actually sprinkled ashes. We won't be doing that tonight, but they sprinkled ashes on the heads uh, of people, and um, they would often fast then until they celebrated the Lord's Supper the next night on Maundy Thursday. And then Good Friday, they would go through all of the suffering and death of Jesus. They would fast on Saturday and pray. Saturday night, they would have an all-night vigil. We do a prayer vigil, but it's not all night, okay? A vigil, and that as the sun came up, they would celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. When Christianity became legal, it was thought best that we would extend this time instead of just during those few days before Easter to 40 days, paralleling Jesus' time in the wilderness, the 40 days and 40 nights. And so Christians would observe this, and often they would observe this as a time for a partial fast. They, they wouldn't eat, perhaps eat meat during that time. And you may be figuring it out and saying, okay, this is February 14th, Easter is March 31st, that's not 40 days, that's 46 days, because the Sundays don't count, you see. And on Sundays, they got to eat meat, (laughs) all right? So this was sort of the structure of all of this. And in many churches today, Ash Wednesday continues to mark the beginning of this time that we focus on Jesus' sacrifice for us. And that's what we're going to be doing at each of our evening services. And we begin tonight with this word from the cross. And for those of you who may be new, um, you say, well, that's... Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It's more than one word, but it means a saying, okay? Jesus spoke seven sayings from the cross related in the Gospels. But let's go a little back in the story. How does he get to the cross? After he celebrated the Passover meal and instituted the Lord's Supper with his disciples on Thursday night, he and the disciples go to the garden. He is praying, but his disciples fall asleep. He submits himself to his father's will. The mob comes, led by Judas, the betrayer. He is arrested. He gives himself up. He spends the night being judged and abused by the Jewish council. In the morning, because the Jews are not able to execute people because they're under Roman rule, He is taken to the Roman governor. And there, Pilate, not wanting to condemn an innocent man, because he can see the Jews are doing this because of their jealousy of Jesus, tries to get out of this, even sends Jesus to Herod, the king. But Herod refuses to do anything with him and sends him back. The chief priests of the people stir up the crowd. They begin to to get more and more um, vociferous. They begin to yell louder, crucify him. They, They threaten to start a riot. 
Pilate calls for a basin of water, washes his hands and says, I am innocent of this man's blood. Jesus is taken out and beaten severely. A crown of thorns is thrust down on his head. He's made to carry his own cross to the place of the skull. And there he is nailed to a cross between two criminals, one on the left hand and one on the right hand. A sign is placed over his head. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Here, I want you to think for a moment about what it means to be crucified on a cross. There's terrible pain when nails are driven through your hands. There's terrible pain when a nail is driven through your two feet to the cross. But it's not the pain nor the blood loss that kills you on the cross. What kills you is what? Suffocation. Because the fluid begins to build up in your lungs and you have to keep pulling yourself, pushing yourself up off these spikes and pushing yourself up to breathe. So when Jesus gives a word from the cross, he has to push himself up and utter these words. And as he goes through that day, it becomes harder and harder to speak the words that he wants to say. Now, I want you to consider this. A group of very, very mean, ugly people have nailed you to a cross. You are innocent of any crime. There stand the chief priests of the people, taunting him and ridiculing him. Oh, you say you're the Christ, the Messiah. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. The soldiers taunt him and ridicule him. They pretend to worship him in front of the cross. You say you're a king? It says you're a king, Jesus. Save yourself. Even one of the thieves taunts and ridicules him, saying, go ahead and save yourself if you're the Messiah. Put yourself in Jesus' place. In the midst of this pain, in the midst of this taunting and ridiculing, in the midst of the betrayal, what word are you going to say from the cross? Tell me, what would you say? I wish I could kill you. Comes to mind. Or maybe something worse. Instead, what does he say? Looking up to the sky, he says, Father, forgive them. You see, Jesus had said, if you follow me, you need to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And unlike myself, he practices what he preaches. I'd like to always practice what I preach, but I don't always do it, right? Those of you who are parents understand exactly what I just said. Okay. But Jesus does exactly what he says you and I are to do. He says, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Don't hold this sin against them. And then he says these words, for they don't know what they're doing. What does he mean by that? They don't know what they're doing. Well, you see, you could tell they didn't know what they were doing because they kept yelling at him, save yourself, save yourself, save yourself. And he could have. In any moment, he could have come off the cross. He could have called on 10,000 angels, he says, in the garden. Struck everyone down. Walked off. He could have done that at any time. But you see, 
They didn't know what they were doing. Through his death, he's going to save the world. He's not interested in saving himself. He's interested in saving you. He's interested in taking away your sins and paying the sacrifice for you. The blood that he spills is as the blood of a lamb sacrificed for us. That's why John could say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is not about saving himself. He's about saving me. He didn't come to save good people. If you're a really, really good person and you don't need any forgiveness, you can leave now. You won't need the rest of the service. <laughs> no, you don't get to leave, Kellen. Okay, all right. So the bottom line is we were weak, we were dead in our sins. We were ungodly. We were, we were helpless. And at that time, Jesus came to die for you and me. That's what he did. Father, forgive them. That prayer is for you and for me, not just for the enemies at the foot of the cross. It's for all of us. Father, forgive them. They didn't know what they were doing. He pleads to the Father for us, for you, and for me. He's not interested in saving himself. He's interested in saving you. In this, in this, the first word from the cross, we are confronted by a king who wears a crown of thorns. We are confronted by the lamb, by the shepherd who gives up his life for the flock. We are confronted by a man who does the will of his Father to set us all free. So begins Lent with Ash Wednesday. In a few moments, we'll be confessing our sins and, and receiving the sign of the cross on our foreheads in ashes. And the words that we say are, from dust you came to dust you shall return. This is from Genesis. The curse of death that came upon us when we sinned. We are reminded of two things. One, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins, and at the same time, we are saved by the cross of Christ. For all who would receive him, there is forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Amen. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness poured out for us upon the cross. This night, as we receive the sign of the cross upon our foreheads, Show us, Lord, how to bear the cross, to forgive others as you have brought forgiveness to us. Lord, there are places where we have hurt others, where we have pointed out the speck in our brother's eye and ignored the beam in our own eye. This night, Lord, we come and confess and ask for your forgiveness, for your healing. Thank you, Lord, that you give that to us freely in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.